guys. If you don't know who I am, that's a shame. My name's Amy, I'm obsessed with Michael, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you guys on how to moonwalk. So of course I had to kind of dress the part here. Um, just a little backstory before I get into the tutorial. I previously owned a dance studio and for our last recital we did a piece on Michael and I wanted everyone to moonwalk and this was with my senior company so these are the best of the best of my dancers and once we started uh, trying to learn the routine I realized that moonwalking does not come natural for most people so that's the purpose of this tutorial so I'm going to be teaching you guys today uh, from my house here on regular wood floor in socks I suggest that uh, if you are beginning to learn or if you're practicing that you use a sock or a very slick shoe because you don't want uh, anything that's going to make your foot stick to the surface. Um, at my studio, I guess the type of wood we have is great because I could moonwalk all over the place in Nike shocks. But let's get started. I've adjusted the camera angle so I have more floor room to work with to teach you guys. When you're doing the moonwalk, there are five essential steps or ingredients that I'm going to teach you to work on. The first step is going to be which foot to slide, which foot not to slide. You have to know that or you can't progress any further. Step two is going to be extending your stride to be the correct length. Step three is going to be proper transition of the feet which goes in conjunction with step four, the body weight. And lastly, step five is just going to be speeding things up and getting it to be a normal, quick rhythm. So let's start with step one. The easiest way to do step, uh, this step or to practice, and I encourage you to practice this more than once, is to start with one heel up, and place the ball of your foot, I have my right heel up, place the ball of your right foot close to the heel of your left foot. But again, you wanna keep your feet about shoulder width apart because remember, it's a moon walk. So always keep the term walk in mind. You want it to be similar to a forward style walk. So we're gonna get our foot in position. The foot that you wanna slide is your flat foot. In this case, it's my left foot. So I'm gonna put most of my weight on the ball of this foot. I still have a little bit of body weight on my left foot, but most of it's on my right foot, so that that way I can pull my left foot back. From here, all I want you to do is switch feet. So flatten your right foot, bring up the heel of your left foot, and then make sure most of your body weight is on the ball of that foot, on your left foot, slide your right foot back. Switch feet. Slide, switch feet, slide. So if you're new to moonwalking, then I want you to practice that because the wrong way to do it, which is what I've seen a lot of people try when they first try to moonwalk, is they try and pull back the foot that has the lifted heel, which just looks weird. That's not a moonwalk, that's not how you walk forward. You don't walk forward like this. So. Again, you slide the flat foot. That's step one. Feel free to rewind, pause, repeat, practice. Step two, lengthening your stride. So to accomplish this step, let's think about the average stride you take when you walk naturally. So to do this, I would encourage you to just stand with your feet shoulder width apart or hip width apart and look in a mirror or like I'm doing here, look in a camera and practice walking normally and just see what your average stride is. So basically the length between the heel of one foot and the toe of the other foot. So do this a couple of times so you can find out what's comfortable for you. And remember, um, you can always, once you get fancy with your moonwalk and get good at it, you can make a longer stride, you can give it a little short pop here and there. Um, but for now, we're just learning the basics. So once you've determined 
what your normal stride is, I want you to practice step one or technique one. So let's start with our right foot bubbled or heel up, ball of the foot on the floor. And I want you to try and slide your left foot back until you're at an appropriate distance, heel to toe ratio. Then just like we did in step one, switch your feet here. So drop the heel, drop the front heel, lift the back heel, and practice sliding again until you should kind of feel a little bit of a fall back at this point because we're not too worried about body weight. We're just trying to get the idea of what it feels like to slide the appropriate width, if you will. So switch again from here and slide back again. So again, I would encourage you to pause, rewind, try that some more. One more time for demonstration. We're going to start with the right heel up, left foot flat, slide it back until you feel a little bit of resistance. Pause, switch your feet, which as you can see, that causes me to switch my body weight a little bit for right now. And I'm going to slide my foot back until I reach resistance. Switch your feet, slide it back. So that's step two. Now you have your distance or your length, length of stride down. So we're gonna move on to step three and step four simultaneously, which is knowing when and how to change your body weight. So what I mentioned in step three was how to change your feet to keep your body weight um, proportionate and moving in a smooth pattern. The moonwalk, as you know, if you've ever seen it done by Michael, it's very smooth. So, as you start to slide your heel back, once you start to meet resistance, I'm trying to do this in slow motion, once you start to meet resistance, you want to start lowering this heel and lifting the heel that you're sliding so you can go right into the next slide. So again, in slow motion, I'm, I'm sliding this foot back until I start to meet resistance, at which point I continue to slide, but I start to make that lift to pull. So this goes in conjunction with step four, which is keeping your upper body um, in line where you want it to be, which is shoulders above hips. You don't want to lean like this. Okay, and if you're, if you're just focused on pushing back, what's going to happen is you're going to wind up trying to do this, and as you can see, my torso is tilted. You want to be up like this. One way to check and see if you're doing this correctly, step three and step four, is again, practice walking in a mirror. I know that sounds silly, but first of all, watch your feet. Whenever you take a step, you lead with your heel. Whenever you go to take the next step, if you walk in slow motion, as you're putting your foot, your toe down, you're lifting your other heel. So take another step. As you put your heel down, you start to put your toe down, you lift your back heel. So for the moonwalk, think of it in, in the same type of sense. Whenever you go to switch this heel, and lift it back, you're starting to lift your other heel. Make sense? As far as step four goes, body alignment, whenever you're walking, think about just walking forward. As you can see, I put my hands behind me so you can see, um, my torso does not do this when I walk forward. So if you follow the rules about when to change your weight in terms of placement over your feet, so body weight on your feet, you should be able to maintain an upright torso. Again, if you're just trying to slide back and switch, it's gonna be really hard to not do this forward lean with your upper body. If, however, you start to switch when you meet resistance, you're going to be able to maintain more of an upper body straight up and down, okay? So, that's step one, two, three, and four. Step one is which foot we slid back, which is your flat foot. Step two, determining your width. Step three, 
determining when to change with your body weight, which goes in line with step four, keeping your torso upright. Step five is going to be speeding it up. So I encourage you to do this at your own pace. Eventually, what you want is a fluid movement. You never want one foot to completely leave the floor. So to show you guys as an example, that was smooth and quick. Here I go again, boom, switch, switch, switch. And don't be afraid um, to do what you want to with your hands, but as you get more comfortable, I encourage you not to do like a pumping motion. Um, Michael honestly normally put his hand in his pocket kind of natural, you know, here I am, what's up, I'm just walking down the street, doing my thing. So just for fun, let's try out the scene.